also something new. Uh, the Thermal Grizzly uh, guys have been working on an improved uh, version of their Cryonaut Thermal Paste. Uh, I'm not sure if this will be going to retail uh, at any time, but uh, I think it's just their way to try to improve a Thermal Paste that is already very very good and one of the uh, best on the market. So uh, the Thermal Paste you can see here is the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Liquid Helium Edition. So uh, you can of course note that by looking at the uh, uh, white and blue sticker uh, on the packaging which says liquid helium minus 250 degrees approved so uh, this is just a fine-tuned version of uh, cryonaut I think the uh, main point of this uh, is that it, it is just made of a small particle size so that it can go to colder temperatures with less risk of cracking so uh, the overall specs are still the same uh, thermal conductivity 12.5 watts per meter kelvin and uh, operating temperature has been uh, well decreased to minus 250 to plus 350 so this is the 11.1 gram size tube and uh, i can already tell you that it is more expensive than the st standard cryonaut so uh, the standard cryonaut here in finland costs around like 21 euros per 11.1 gram tube and that is with shipping so around that mark so for, uh, at least 20 euros for the uh, 11 gram size tube so uh, what i want to show you is that i will do a test run uh, on the uh, thermal crystal cryonaut against the kimping cooling kpx which is the only thermal paste i've been using for over two years now for sub-zero overclocking purposes because when it originally came out i really liked it it really uh, it's kind of uh, crack proof, although it will crack uh, with some serious hardware like X299 CPUs and uh, very, very high powered modern graphics cards like 2080 Ti, 1080 Ti and so on. So uh, I just I will do a test run for you on Ambient uh, and see which has better uh, thermal performance with just uh, on uh, water cooling. Uh, I will use the same setup as in my liquid metal comparison so I will just run the 8700K on the Z390 Dark uh, with a thermal grizzly conductor note between the die and the IHS and then we'll then I will just compare the two thermal pastes on top of the IHS so I can already expect that the uh, result will be pretty much identical because they don't really differ that much when you test on top of the IHS but yeah so uh, if we just take a look at the packaging yeah i already showed you backside so there's nothing really uh, special and if we open it that's the tube itself so it's exactly the same as your normal crying out tube uh, overall instructions and uh, one tube head to make easier application so they actually didn't they didn't include any plastic applicators with this uh, particular packaging but yeah i'm not fully sure that if will this even ever go retail uh, as the price will be quite high as this is very expensive to produce and uh, if it goes retail then what is the point of the original cryonaut when you have two different cryonauts on the market and uh, what one of which has better performance than the other one so that's kind of confusing to me uh, the good thing about Kimping Cooling KPX is that it is only a single product on the market. There's no like different product levels. Just a simple uh, way to make the best possible thermal paste on the market, and that's what it is. It only comes in three different sizes. So, uh, but yeah. Without further ado, let's get the uh, thermal pastes compared on top of the 8700K, and let's see how they perform. All right, so on to the conclusion. So uh, I utilized the uh, uh, end result of my liquid metal tim testing as I used the uh, cryonaut liquid helium edition with those liquid metals. So uh, I just reran the uh, conductor out uh, with KPX on top of the IHS. So uh, the end result was that the, uh, well, I already showed you that with the uh, cryonaut liquid helium edition, the uh, maximum core temperatures after uh, almost 30 minutes in prime 95 26.6 with 
5.2 gigahertz on the uh, uh, CPU, 4.7 on the cache, and 1.32 on the V core uh, with minus 50% small V droop. The uh, core temperatures ended up being 64.33 degrees uh, uh, on average, and uh, the uh, difference to room temperature was 37.8. And uh, for Kimping Cooling KPX, the average of the core maximums was 64.167 degrees. So that is like point, like point 15 or point 16 degrees better. And uh, the delta to room ambient temperature was uh, 37.667 degrees. So that is like uh, point 14 degrees better. So these results are definitely within the margin of error. They are almost identical. So uh, just as I guessed, as uh, the uh, the overall difference isn't isn't that much anyways uh, in the end when compared on top of the CPU IHS, but yeah. So my overall conclusion is that these two are definitely great pastes. Of course, the uh, weird part about the uh, cryonaut liquid helium edition is that will it ever be available? What will be the price? Of course, it will be much more expensive than the standard cryonaut, and. Uh, then where does the original Cryonaut stand? If they bring the liquid helium edition to the market, uh, what's the point of the original Cryonaut when there's something almost uh, when there's something a little bit better from the same guys over at uh, Thermal Grizzly? So uh, and also the uh, availability uh, availability of KPX is still quite bad in Europe. So uh, both of these pastes are quite hard to get if you are here in Europe. Uh, you can get the uh, paste very very easy from kimpingcooling.com but then there's fairly expensive shipping for just the thermal paste uh, I'm not sure if Alza will start shipping the paste again to whole of Europe they only ship to a few, a few selected countries uh, as far as I still uh, remember but yeah so uh, of course I always like if people want to get, make their product, products even better and better uh, so I do like the uh, Cryonaut uh, improved liquid helium edition. I tested it once on the 7350K on LM2 as uh, I was told by one other famous overclocker from HWBot that it's that that I mean that it's very good on the i3 dual core CPUs and it went uh, quite well as you can see in my short clip. <laughs> Oh well, the uh, Thermal Crystal Cryonaut Liquid Helium he liquid helium Edition seems to be quite good. I managed to pass X2654K at 6675. I managed to break the uh, uh, top score by uh, like 0 0.004 FPS. So the previous score was, the previous top score was 6.745. But still, still, this is quite nice results. So uh, for 180 plus or on the memory, maximum 9 apex. So very nice. So yeah, top one, top one re uh, result in uh, X2654 K on dual core category. That is very nice. But yeah, other than that, the overall result was kind of identical with the uh, KPX as well as the Cryonaut Liquid Helium Edition. So uh, it's not that easy to uh, point out the best of the two. So uh, yeah, if you liked this little comparison, if you have some questions about the uh, Cryonaut Liquid Helium Edition, then please leave a comment down below. As I said, I don't know when it will be available, if it will be available, you can ask more questions about it from uh, uh, AK of Thermal Grizzly, uh, maybe he can uh, answer for you. But yeah, please like my video and uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, see you next time.